Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to do something that I apparently should have already done, which is install a better extruder cooling fan. Now that I'm using Clipper, I've run into an issue with heat creep. Heat creep is when the heat from the heater block creeps up to the heat break, which is this copper tube here going into the heat block. That heat causes the filament to melt inside that tube, which, when it solidifies, causes a clog. As you can see here, with the blue filament stuck in there. I usually print smaller things, so I hadn't really encountered any issue with the heat creep until I printed something that took a couple hours to print. It was only when I started the print after that long one that I noticed the jam. Now I could likely clean this out with a heat gun or something, but I already have a replacement that Solval sent me a while back, so I'm just going to use it instead. But first, I put the printer back together just so I could show you how I took it apart and replaced it. So let's jump right into it. First, I found this 5015 fan mount and printed it out of black Overture PETG on my Ender 3 Pro. And here is what the replacement hot end looks like. It comes with a nozzle, screws, and pretty much everything you need to go. But the first thing I did was heat up my old heat block and remove the nozzle because it's a hardened steel nozzle and I want to use that on the new one instead of the brass one that comes with it. Then I got impatient and removed the hot nozzle by hand, which I don't advise. <laughs> Next, <laughs> Next, I had to remove the whole extruder assembly, which is really easy. I just unplugged the ribbon cable and then removed these three screws. Once I got those out, I unplugged the part cooling fan. So if you're doing this, be cautious of that plug. I mean, if you've replaced your original cooling fan anyway. And here it is. The heat block is only held on by the two screws here on either side of where the nozzle goes. So I just pop those out real quick. Then I unplugged the heater cartridge and thermistor, and it was free. I did clean it up a little bit, as you can see, and I'll try to stick my solder syringe tip through there. And it's completely jammed, as you'll see, if I can manage to keep it in frame anyway. When I put the new one on, I first inserted the heat brake and then plugged the cables in. It was just easier for me to do it in that order. Then I just screwed it down. Next, I removed the old extruder fan, which was just held on by four screws located on each corner. Then I unplugged it. I'm gonna have to reuse this cable because it has a much smaller plug than the replacement 5015 fan does as you can see here. After that, I removed the two screws that are holding the fan mounting bracket on. And this is where I ran into an issue. I didn't realize that in order to use this fan mount, I would have to completely take apart the extruder, flip the stepper motor around, and extend the cable, all just to get this plug out of the way. And while it doesn't look that difficult to do, I really just don't want to bother with all that. So, not a f chance. That's when I found this mounting bracket that juts out away from the plug, and it says it doesn't interfere with the x-axis. So, I printed it out of the same black PETG and installed it by using the same two screws that came out of the original bracket. And apparently I forgot to hit record when I was desoldering and moving the wires connected to these fans. But as you can see, under the fan labels, it's just two solder pads. That's where the red and black wires connect, so I just desoldered them and put the smaller one on the 5015. There's a piece of tape here holding the label down because I'm gluing it back down. Now, it says you'll need an M4 by 20 screw to mount the fan. I didn't have one, so I just grabbed the closest machine screw I had lying around. 
I couldn't tell you what size it is though. Just be weary if you're going to do this mod. You will need an M4x20 or something close. Anyway, I plug the fan in and that's it. All is done on this end. Now I just have to remount it to the printer. First I made sure to plug the cooling fan back in. Then I found it was easiest to plug the ribbon cable in to kind of hold it all in place so you can screw it on. Most importantly, don't forget to drop everything. Immediately lose the screw. And as you can see, it does not interfere with the x-axis, which was my only concern. After I mounted it, I heated it up and removed the brass nozzle and put the hardened steel nozzle back in. Now let's see if it will extrude some filament. Finally, I can start printing again. Alright, so I'm going to leave you with something I recently designed. If you've got one of these cheap little handheld vacuum slash blower things from Amazon, this is a great way to keep everything stored and out of the way. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in. Catch you in the next one. And as always, have the best day ever.